Welcome back traders to Star Oasis channel. My name is Ali Casey. Today's video is a free strategy of uh, mirror version. Usually I do uh, all my strategies on futures because I trade mainly futures, although I do trade uh, other assets, but always through futures. And the reason is because of some guarantees by the exchanges and, and no fakes uh, by the currency brokers, which I'm sure there are many good, but I had my share of uh, bad brokers. But I know a lo lots of you trade uh, currencies. And so this strategy today will be about currency. I develop always mean strategies on ES and sometimes on the, the Russell and Nasdaq and Dow. I consider them the same as the ES, so I don't do much on them. The reason is because the ES, which is the S&P 500 index, uh, it's uh, mainly a mirror version market, meaning the character of this market, uh, it's mirror reverting. Yes, it goes up, it goes down, but it always goes up with a cycle around the mean and it goes down with the same thing, with a cycle around the mean. Now, in currencies, uh, the same thing uh, is there. Some currencies have a characteristics of trend following and some of them of mean reverting. Now, today, we're not going to go over how to find out, but uh, probably I'm going to dedicate uh, one video to show you how to find the character of the market. Mainly, is it mean reverting or is it trending? In currencies, uh, the Canadian dollar is a mean reverting currency, not against all pairs. So the best pair to uh, get it with the Canadian dollar is the New Zealand dollar. So New Zealand against Canadian, this is a very mean reverting pair. You will have a high chance of success developing mean reversion strategy on this pair. Same like you will have high probability of success developing mean reversion on uh, the S&P 500. Okay, so how will we will start this? So we'll go Algo Wizard and let's set the engine. So I use Trade Station and let's use Forex and let's see New Zealand Canadian. So because the Forex is more active than futures uh, because it's traded 24 hours all over the globe, although the futures are traded the same way. But still, currencies have more active periods in 24 hours. Whereas the, for example, the S&P 500 has a pronounced period of activity in the morning uh, Eastern Standard Time. And then some activity around uh, before closing. And then uh, probably you will find 1 to 2 a.m. It's also a little bit active uh, because of Europe but not really as currencies. And that's the reason we're going to pick a hourly time for the currencies because it is more active uh, than the futures. So this is the data I have. Trading option, there is nothing. And we will use one lot to test our theory. You can use RSI, which I use all the time. And this time I'm going to introduce you to something else. So most of you heard of Bollinger Bands. And if not, I'll show you what they mean. So Bollinger Bands is basically a simple moving average or exponential moving average. This is the line in the middle. And then you have one envelope, upper channel and lower channel. And those will be based on percentage or standard deviation. So Bollinger Band is not the only indicator that can have an envelope, but we'll use Bollinger Band today. Usually Bollinger Band come with 20 period simple moving average and two standard deviation on the upper channel and two standard deviation on the lower channel. Now there are many variations you can do on this, but let's stick with the basic uh, definition. Here is another definition. You can see a video on it. And so the Bollinger Band is a moving average with upper Bollinger Band, which is typically two standard deviation. So the idea is you go long when the price 
breaks below the lower channel and you will go short when the price breaks above the upper channel and you take profit somewhere in the middle which is usually the SMA so from the graph you can see that the further the channel away the less noise you're gonna face and the less trade you're gonna make so the further the channels are the less trades you're gonna have and the less noise you're gonna have and the closer they are the more trades you have but the more noise you'll have and noise meaning uh, you will have fake uh, trades so let's build this in strategy quantex so we'll pick bollinger bands so the it's based on the claw of course you can do many variations but let's do the typical now the typical is 20 and 2 so since we are using the hourly i don't want to get all the noise in so we need to get rid of the noise and to get rid of the noise you need to smooth this uh, uh, the the close prices which is the simple moving average so i will use 100 periods and again to minimize the noise because based on this if this is further away then theoretically you should have less signals actually let's do it now let's do two but what i want to do is more than two but let me show you the difference so this is two and i will go along when the lower so i built this uh, the wrong way <laughs> this should be the close when the close is lower than the Bollinger Bands. Bollinger Bands closed 102 and no shift and lower. So that's my entry signal and then my exit signal is when the close is above the simple moving average so in this case SMA and 100 and let's do a full back test so this is getting 457 trades so you can see now if we push it further away we should get less trades now I don't know if that's good or bad but definitely less trades and I just want to get rid of the noise and actually uh, let me show you this so remember that uh, the typical is 20 and look now how many trades we're gonna have so four five seven now and look at this it's more than double so we to get rid of the noise just increase the moving average and let's increase the standard deviation And we are there that's a good start the uh, the uh, entry is now 325 trades that's about a third a quarter less than before and it looks uh, good as a start now also the exit obviously the more you 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 add so let me try this at uh, 150 so let's see now we have 325 trades and we just decrease uh, so we get rid of some of the noise and also this enhance our profit obviously noise does affect the profits the, the but it's a balance because you don't want to end up with you know five trades so let's do now three standard deviation and now we are almost half uh, the trades but I don't see any benefit uh, I don't see a lot of benefit here so let's go back to two and a half and let's see what 200 does here so that's also not an end. so 150 it looks like a good period to start with And this was shifted so I removed the shift and so this is a good start now you can add maybe a profit target stop-loss also you can add 
a regime filter so a simple uh, regime filter i can do scoffman efficiency ratio let's say uh, let's pick five and let's see let's try point three first And let's see, point seven. So a little bit less trades. So let's go the opposite way. A little bit better. And then if we go point three. So we lost half the trades so I don't like that so let me try five somewhere in the middle so this looks good so with the filter let me uh, put the filter here so copy paste so with the filter we're making 15,000 with 41% drawdown and without the filter 15 but 60% drawdown so the filter obviously enhanced our uh, overall risk adjusted return which is this guy so 241 so if I put it back You can see now it's 277. Okay, so I forgot to change this moving average to 150. It doesn't have to be, but I think it will enhance the returns. Yeah, a little bit. So, and the other thing we can do is really is shifting. So the signal is happening on the same day, zero shift. Uh, let me see if the filter is shifted. Nope. And let's see if it's two more. Yeah, see, you shifted two days, which means the signal happened two days ago. So already we're enhancing the returns with roughly the same number of trades. And let me shift this one. And now it's a little bit more. So you can see simple things like delaying the signal. This is all what we're doing. We're delaying the signal. And let's try also delaying this one. That's much better now. So usually a breakout, uh, let's say in trend following, if you wait for a breakout to end, uh, and then re retrace back and then see if it's going to go up again. That's usually a good thing. So that's all what I did here. I just delayed the signal and took the trade and then find out if it's good or bad. So I got rid of some fakes too. So I hope uh, this video was useful to you. Uh, as usual, please smash the like button so Google can push it to other traders and they can see the benefit of this wonderful platform where we can test our ideas and hopefully make money with it and if you like the content please do share like subscribe and hit the notification bell so you'll be notified when a new video uploaded to the channel and until the next video stay safe and i'll see you soon